I said, pretty little mama, it really got me torn up. Making young and wanna pour up. You the one I wanna call up. I said, pretty little mama, it really got me torn up. Making young and wanna pour up. Hey, yeah, sipping on the devil, got me mixing up the trouble, girl, it's for us. Why you got me singing on the chorus? Yeah, it's only 8 o'clock, the shit will warm up. Still be yelling, welcome to the come up. Shall be chasing money till the sun's up. Sitting on the ground. You ain't got no bitches, you ain't got a chance. Drop it when she dance. Toss you like a glance. Tossing up her hands. Got you in a trance. A pretty little mama. It really got me torn up. Make a young and wanna pour up. You the one I wanna call up. I said, pretty little mama. It really got me torn up. Make a young and wanna pour up. You the one I wanna call up. Yeah, call up for the night show. Got the nice flow, yeah. Girl, you know I never said a size low, yeah. We don't need a plan to we'll see what life goes. Yeah. We've been catching feelings, hard to fight those. Yeah. Hey, I remember when I could not do like any wrong. Yelling fuck the people that won't let you on. Yelling fuck the bitches that ain't let you on. You said, boy, you deserve a better one. Demons coming at me, but I never run. Pressure on my shoulders and it wear a ton. Give my heart a heart, I do this shit on one. Till that day comes, I feel any love, mama. Really got me torn up. Make a young and wanna pour up. You the one I wanna call up. I said, pretty little mama. Really got me torn up. Make a young and wanna pour up. You the one I wanna call up. All right. Okay, guys. Hey, we are Fred and Andressa, and this is your Methodology Monday. Welcome for one more live video. Hope you guys had a great start of the week, that you guys had a great Monday. I love Mondays. Most people don't, but I really like it because I adore anything that has this energy of new beginning, of renovation, of starting new. So Mondays, New Year's, I love those things. So we are going to talk today about different classes for different audience. So we are going to have a chat about how to prepare an introduction class, so a tryout class uh, for when you are invited or have the opportunity to teach uh, people like when you are introducing Brazilian Zoop to a new crowd, right? So those classes that we go and give in Latin parties or in dance schools that we are invited to go and show Brazilian Zoop. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about it, about that and it was actually a suggestion from one of you guys. Uh, so Roy Pong uh, suggested us that we would uh, talk about this topic. So please sorry if i mentioned uh, your name wrong but yeah so we are um uh, preparing to talk about this with you guys today so guys sorry if i look to my notes once in a while fred is trying to fix something with the camera here so that's why you're yeah. seeing like half his arm <laughs> because uh it seems that on facebook we are rotated so we are with the camera yeah. upside down or laying down so he's fixing that and we can get started as soon as he manages to fix it yeah it's just for some reason it, the um, the live on facebook it doesn't want to go um yeah it doesn't want to go like horizontal so i'm trying to fix it right now but anyway I will try one more time if if you're not be, in, being able to watch it there so you can join us on YouTube and let me see now if it goes right hopefully we're gonna be able to 
All right, I think now it's working good on on Facebook as well. So Yay. sorry, <laughs> yeah, sorry about the whole confusion because uh, I don't know for some reason the orientation of the the camera uh, it went from uh, horizontal to vertical and then to watch it vertical it would be yes. like kind of crazy to to Good. do it. So, so hi again to the Facebook, Facebook people, well. people who are watching us through the group Zook Methodology by FNA. Uh, we managed to fix the camera and again yeah. uh, we are going to talk about different <laughs> different classes for different audience so uh, those classes that you have to give when you go and give a tryout class or you are yeah. introducing Brazilian Zook to a new crowd so you had the opportunity to showcase this dance that we love so much to make maybe get some new enthusiasts so how to prepare those classes how to balance out what you teach in a way that people will have fun and we're still gonna get some information so and this was a suggestion actually from one of you guys from hoi pong uh i'm sorry if i didn't pronounce her yeah. name right <laughs> but yeah, we yeah, tried we tried we tried yeah so yeah let's get started yeah i think a good thing to to understand about this is this topic is that i think sometimes we need to think about like for example let's say that you have a product and someone is ordering this product for a certain crowd okay and then this crowd is the is the is the crowd that you need to to give this um this or deliver this order specifically for that taste so it it varies a lot there are a lot of ways to do it okay but we're gonna divide it to make it easier okay so you can get the idea because that's the main point so we're gonna divide it between people that dance you know, when the crowd is a crowd of people that already dance, that go for social dancing or have some dancing in background, it's in touch somehow with dance. And the crowd that uh, it's made from non-dancing people. They are like friends of friends that don't dance and maybe you would like them to start dancing or doing something as a hobby or whatever. So we have the, this crowd of people that dance and the people that don't dance. So in this situation, we have two different orders to deliver two different products, right? So we're gonna just make this parallel with the product so you can get the point, okay? So we let's talk about the differences a little bit, right? Yeah, we're gonna, yeah. Uh, let's start with uh, the preparing the cl those classes for people who, who already dance. So, and let's focus a little bit more on people who already social dance yeah. because it makes things easier in a few ways, right? So people who already social dance, they, they dance kizomba, salsa, bachata, uh, west coast swing whatever it is they are already used to dancing with another person yeah so this is a barrier that you already have out of your way they are already used to dancing itself so the movement is not something that is completely strange for them so we already have those things in our favor right so the level of intimidation and discomfort is going to be way way lower so is it is an environment that people are already used to. They are already used to dance classes. They are used to couple dance classes. So we have that in our favor. So they are familiar with these mechanics in general. How a dance class works, the rotation of partners, uh, rhythm, uh, Latin yeah. rhythms, you know. It's so, like the ice is broken, right? So, exactly. Yeah, they don't have the same barriers that the other people will do. Um, all these touching thing, proximity, um, they don't, the whole dance environment itself, it's not a threatening environment because they are somehow familiar with everything, although they are not familiar with that specific new dance that is going to be presented. Exactly. So it's as if you were introducing something new to their menu, but they are already used to uh, going to that restaurant, let's say, yeah, you know, so we're just going to present them with one more option, one more opportunity for them to dance and to have fun. So, uh, they tend, those people, they tend to learn faster, but sometimes their dance background is so strong that this also may take a little while to uh, break a little bit of the strong body uh, placements and positions and the way of move in that their body that already come from this background so we should not worry about that in the introdu introduction class right this will come with time yeah 
and uh, they may learn uh, faster, like at least those basics that you're going to present for them. Yeah, you have already a lot of things there on your favor in this sense, because you don't need to go super basic because they kind of are familiar with basics from dances, although they are different, but you have very short time to do a lot of things and you need to give them the taste of the dance. So if you get too much on this, then you're gonna spend too much time on something that won't deliver this taste, this feeling of like, how is this dance, right? So you have this on your favor, so you can go a little bit past of it and then work with the basic the way they have already and carry on a little bit to get for the taste, yeah. you know? One thing that is very interesting is that we need to uh, bring accessibility to these people. So we have to show them that this new dance is something accessible that they can learn. But at the same time, we can already introduce uh, like an extra level of challenge yeah. and also to show them why is this different? Why should this uh, try this dance as well because they already have those other dances that they like. Yeah. So it's nice that you show those things that you really love the most about this dance that you dance, right? Because it's like, uh, or pick and choose things in the basics that really showcase those aspects that you think that's gonna make the difference for them. Like, why yeah. is this different from salsa, from bachata? So why should they come and try Brazilians look more often and dance Brazilians look more often, right? So yeah. this is the challenge in this case, uh, to show them that they should also dance these other dance. Yeah, right. you need to remember that if, for example, if you are with a crowd that they already dance salsa, or they dance kizomba, or they are into bachata, and you want them just to get interested in Suzuki, you need to remember that they are passionate about the dance they are doing at the moment. So then, if you become too passionate, passionate to your own dance, to present them and do a lot of things, super technical, super advanced, super everything, they get, they get the feeling, or they may get the feeling that, okay, they need to spend some time to do that. And then when they put in the balance to like, okay, how I'm gonna spend my time, they're gonna choose to what they're doing. They're gonna choose to spend their time to improving what they chose, not in this new thing. But if it's something that, okay, they feel that, all right, this is nice, it's different, and there are some challenges that may be interesting in the journey. So I'm getting interested to know more. So then it's gonna come in the spare time, you know, like when they are not dancing the dance they chose in the first place, they're gonna try out that one, see a little bit more, come to visit some socials, then come to the class. Then afterwards, they may get like very passionate about it and then maybe spend even more time in this one than the one they were dancing before. But they, they cannot have this impression of, okay, this is gonna be very time consuming and I already have a lot of goals in my dance here. So I don't wanna know about it, you know? So you need to bring the accessibility so they get the feeling, but you need to bring a little bit of the challenge of like, okay, you need to dedicate a little bit more to feel it but you need to measure this very well yeah so accessibility but enough technique so they feel that they need to invest also some time yeah uh, to learn it properly right so uh they need to feel the stimulus what we are trying to say is that they, they need to feel stimulated to come and try and to have this as a new goal right and sometimes this can be many things sometimes it doesn't depend on the dance only or in the class that you're gonna give the music tells a lot about this how yeah. much they are gonna identify or enjoy the music that you you use the crowd the people that uh, are involved in that community is also something that is going to define a lot if someone is going to come and stay or not so we have this uh, um, task to show the dance to introduce that dance but also are those variables that uh it's gonna tell a lot if someone's gonna come and stay or if they're gonna feel that okay that's not not for me it's not my crowd it's not my yeah. type of music or and things like that guys one thing that me and freddy we talk about a lot is that it's really hard when you are already very good at something and we are talking here about maybe you are presenting zook for people who have been dancing social dances for years and yeah, years a long time it's hard for us psychologically 
uh, to be a beginner again in something. Sometimes, especially if you think like that you have a higher level in those other dances, put yourself as a beginner again. Some people love that. Uh, so they have some personalities that love that. I really enjoy that. I love being yeah. a beginner uh, in things that I have never done before. But some people Generally, feel, it's not like that. Yeah, yeah it's you. Some people, although they dance, they may feel uncomfortable because they are already so good. They are dancers that they are like sought after on the dance floor in their dance, yeah. the dance that they already dance. That this is a barrier also that we have to try and break. So that's when the accessibility comes in handy because they will, uh, at the same time that they will feel that they are already dancing a little bit of Brazilian Zouk with their accessibility, they will feel that, okay, but I have ready to go to class also if I want to do this or that more advanced and cool stuff. Right? Yeah, for, for a lot, for most of people, they feel like starting over. Although they are starting something new, but the feeling of like, okay, I'm the, the one that everybody goes after on the dance floor, being a leader or a follower, whatever. They are now in a way that they are nobody. And then they need to start over. So it is a challenge. For so, a lot of people. Yeah, so that's also when uh, both the balance between accessibility and challenge comes comes in and also the environment. So if you have a very cool, very nice class, a class that is like a people who identify with you and also you have an, a nice crowd, a welcoming community. So that's why also it's important to take care of your yeah. community. We're going to get to that a little bit later here. So this, so also people feel that, okay, I want to stay here. I want to spend more time with these people. I want to spend more time listening to this music. So all of this come into play. Right? And of course, like uh, different than what we were saying in the other, in the, in the last live we made about the, the classes for the events and everything where we said that, okay, we are going to prioritize some concept and then use the movements around it to work on that concept. Like in a class like this, you can do that too but in a in a crowd that, that is made with people that dance already you can get some concepts that work for other dances as well and work around this but they may need to see like okay show me something cool from this dance you know like that's what i want to see show me some movement something nice that makes me feel like okay i want to learn that dance so then you need to find the balance that too like to work you, it's you're not going to build the, the class the same way because you're not with the crowd that came for this. Like, they're already in this. It's a crowd that's curious about it. So you need to work in the curiosity, you know, and then bring it even stronger. So then this curiosity lead them to take the class and keep studying. So you're going to bring this concept around uh, in the class. You're going to work around this because it's something that it is going to be useful for them, even to the dance they are doing at the moment. But you need to try to use something nice uh, with the flexibility, but also a little bit of challenge. So they feel like, okay, this movement is cool. It uses the concept I it's kind of familiar uh, with. And also it's, um, it can get much better if I train because it requires some time. So if I really train, I will be able to do this super smoothly or super nice or super fast, super sharp, or what, depending on, the, on what you chose to do. So these are like, I think the parameters, like that you need to fill in this class because usually you have 50 minutes sometimes to do something like this in a tryout class or sometimes even less if it's a it's a class prior to a party sometimes it's 30 minutes and it's like straight to the point you know yeah and make sure that they leave the class being able to dance a little bit uh of the dance so they remain in the brazilian zook dance floor if they have yeah. one right or at least they want to keep trying after the class finishes so this is something nice to do. They already have something to dance Brazilian Zouk. And since it's a crowd of people, they already dance. When it comes to the time to showcase, so you're going to do your demo, uh, either at the end of the class, in the middle of the party, whatever it is, you can bring a little bit of a higher level demo, right? So you can go spin on axis, counterbalance, yeah. all the things that showcase are really cool all the nice about stuff. Brazilian Zouk, <laughs> you can... Uh, explore that because as they are already used maybe to watch dance performances yeah. dance demonstrations and things like this so they tend to feel more 
motivated than intimidated yeah. by the cool stuff. The challenges that they didn't feel in the class, because of course you, you wouldn't be able to bring it to them, they are going to see the challenges in the, in the demo. They are going to feel like, oh my God, this is so cool. This is so nice. I want to do that. Now they have the motivation and all these stimulus that they need to go for a class and start studying it because they saw a bigger picture of the whole thing, of the, the dance, you know. So now uh, as they are familiar with watching performances in the dances they are in, um, studying from videos and other things, it's good. Then it's the time. Like Then you really can bring it to the challenge to them. Of course, they still show all the access accessible things that you did in the class, so they they identify all those things and then take it to another level. So you really make the bridge. You see, you you make them feel what you did in the class and what they did themselves, and then take all of those things to a much higher level, so they feel like where to go. Yeah. Then it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a nice recipe, you know. Of course, guys, that everything we are saying here. It's based on our experiences in building these uh, communities like already in three different countries. And of course that they are things that may be a little bit different here and there depending on the crowd, depending on the place, depending on the purposes. As we said in the beginning, we are just dividing between people that dance and people that don't. Okay. Yes, so let's jump ahead and go to the tryout classes for people that don't dance. Those people are not familiar with the mechanics of dancing. Yeah. They have no clue of how a dance class works, especially a dance class where you dance with other people. <laughs> so let's imagine this scenario, right? So you have a company party and someone asks for you to give a class for the entertainment of those people. Both of those people in this company party, those are also potential clients for your yeah. dance studio, for your class, and uh, potential members of your community. Yeah, potential new students. Exactly. And they are completely uncomfortable with the environment already because it's something completely out of their comfortable zone. It's something new. It's something that they will need to expose themselves and they are going to have to expose themselves in front of the other ones, in front of colleagues, in front of people that know them or... I don't know, like maybe family, friends, family, friends, or sometimes even in, uh, in, in among people that don't know them. But they are gonna, there will be exposure, you know, for in something that they are not familiar with and they don't know. So everything is not working in favor to the crowd. But they had the courage and they they were willing to try. So this is good. This is positive. That's where we're gonna hook them from. Okay, and then uh, of course, as they are not familiar, they they are a little bit, you know, scared about what's gonna what's gonna come. We need to try to keep the entertaining and fun atmosphere the whole time, bringing as much accessibility as we can, because this is the main point in this class: accessibility, entertainment, and comfort. Because they need to feel they are having a good time. Above all. Like no matter what happened, this is what this is what they need to feel. And that's actually what they are yeah. going to remember after, and yeah. that's what gonna make them look for your uh, for your classes after. Like they felt good, they had a good time. Yeah. So they are not necessarily gonna uh, gonna come for a second time because they immediately fell in love with the yeah. dance. Although this can happen, right? But if they are looking for a hobby, they are probably just gonna. Uh, first rely on what they felt while yeah. practicing that hobby, right? So this is something that also is good to have in mind. So accessibility here is key, right? So don't think about showing them like uh, cool stuff yeah. and things that are, they are going to take a, a hard time trying to understand because they probably are going to feel insecure and then it's not going to be a good experience that they will asso associate with the dance. Yeah, that's it, guys. I think the um, the main point for the, the non-dancing people, you know, when you have the crowd there, it's unfamiliar with everything, is that you they in the end of everything, they are gonna feel like okay, it's a nice dance. I didn't get everything very well. Actually, I was like stepping more off beat, off everything than than anything else. But it was super cool. I laughed so much. You know, I had a good time. The, every time we were changing partner 
We were laughing, at, making fun of all those mistakes and all those stuff. You were super cool. People were super nice. All these things, yeah, all these things are going uh, going to make the difference in the end. Yeah, the interaction of people is something that we have to pay attention to. It has to be something that is light and fun and entertaining because this sometimes is one of the biggest challenges for people who have never danced before. They are not only going to dance, but they are going to dance with another person. Yeah. So it has to be much more about how they are going to interact than actually like really focus on a connection and uh, really like technique with frame and at that point right so of course we are gonna teach some key basic movements again so they are able to um, dance a little bit afterwards if they have some time to practice and dance and have fun and really get to know a little bit of this like uh, like say free sample of yeah. the class of the dance but um, also that they have a good time together, right? So they don't get afraid of coming to a social dance uh, environment, right? So this is something that is very important, but we have to be careful with another thing while we're trying to create this in, um, environment is that if being funny is not something that comes natural to you, don't, don't. try to hide. Don't. Okay? Because what happens? It's important that people will have fun but you don't have to necessarily to be funny, funny. Yeah. right? It's like you are an entertainer, but through the dance, you are not a stand-up comedy artist that went there to make people laugh, you know? So of course that there are some teachers that they have this really naturally, they take the joke like really quickly, they are good in improvising this and doing this kind of stuff, which is really good because it helps a lot. But you don't have to be like this to succeed in that as well. So the fun idea is that it's a relaxing atmosphere. Everybody feels comfortable to speak, to say, to do some, to, to make some jokes in the way. You know, always there are those guys or those girls that speak a little bit louder and they make some fun, you know, and they, they make joke with the colleague. And then you just like fit this a little bit, you know, in a nice way. But you yourself don't need to be the funny guy in, in, in the crowd, you know, or doing something like this especially if, if it's not something natural from you because then it, it feels a little bit like pushy yeah. and it feels that people start noticing that you are trying to be funny but you are not being really funny and then the whole focus of the class changes you know yeah so what helps a lot and what works really well for this to create this fun and entertaining and still like technical atmosphere is that if you have some dynamic exercises up your sleeve so things that you can put them in a circle things that you can really make them like you know yeah. interact the, the simple high five is already an interaction that makes them touch each other yes. you know like and and interact and then you can work with something nice cool stuff when doing this changing partners you yeah. know so dynamic exercise is working really well and also it's good to keep the high energy in the class so it helps also if you go around and uh, try a few times with people who are in the class so do the movement with the students dance with them a little bit during the class you don't need to do the full class yeah. in the circle like going around but once twice uh, three times it's good also because then you keep the energy going and you also interact with yeah. people so you present yourself as approachable as well also observe always observe the crowd you know like it's nice when you observe and see the class you are running because you all you can always see those more extrovert people and you can see the really introvert ones and then of course you can get a moment and then show the movement with uh one for example if you are the male teacher you can get one of the girls they are very extrovert they're like already all over the place talking a lot making a lot of fun and then you know, like show maybe the movement a little bit with girls in something, you know, that people are gonna gonna uh, uh, say like, yeah, let's see now, go girl, yeah, we are with you. So you bring some something like this, because if you get the wrong person, you get an introvert, and then the person feels even more comfortable, and then now it's- Uncomfortable. Yeah, it's, it's really now uh, it's, uh, terrified because you brought the person to the middle of the circle, and now everybody's staring at her, and then now maybe you're ruining everything. So the same thing if, it, if you were a female teacher and then 
you can get one of those guys there that look more confident and then try to like, yeah, do it with me now. See, like show the guys. That's it. And then even if make the mistake, the guy made them a lot of mistakes on the way, but you encourage because like the little things you got that he got right or he got to the end of the movement, you can, you know, like empower that thing and say, yeah, that's it, man. You got the way. You got the way. That's it. A little bit of practice here and there and we're going to make it. So then you can interact a little bit to try to keep the energy going and the energy flow. Because if you feel that the energy is dropping, 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 then it's hard to keep this as an entertainment feeling like, you know, in the class. Yeah, guys. So, but again, observe your crowd. Observe. See if your crowd is up to this yeah. participation. There are yeah. some classes that we don't do this at Not all. Not at all. Because we feel that like the majority of people there, we're going to... They are going to be really uncomfortable with say, oh, yeah. come here and show. Yeah. Okay, so the um, capacity of observing your crowd, observing the group of people that you have there to work is something that is going to be super important for you as a, teach as a teacher in, this, in these situations and in other situations as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. Right? So, it's the time to showcase the dance. So, when it comes the time to do your demonstration, you want to keep it simple. Yeah, that's a completely different story now. Right, because what happens is that sometimes people can get intimidated. They can look and think it's beautiful, fall in love, think that is the most uh, entertaining thing that they have ever seen, that you guys are great, that you have awesome skills as dancer. Then comes the thoughts. But that it's not for them. Nah, not for me. Uh, if I was younger, maybe I would try this. Uh, yeah, if I had if I had the chance to start this like 20 years ago, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm not fit enough to yeah. do those things. Oh, I would never do a head movement like that, like shaking my yeah. head and my hair. Or like I would never be that sexy or I would never be that energetic. So we have again, also in this case during the demonstration, try to keep it simple, right? So you're going to show the... Cool, again, the nice aspects of Brazilian look, but in a way that people can look and say, oh, this is so cool. And I think they can do that. Yeah. Right? Because I, I understand. I understand that we teach or we uh, passionate people about Zook when we want to, when it's our demo time. We want to dance. We want to show what it is, what it's about. We want to show all the nice stuff. And then make the per the other people feel these nice things that we feel when we dance but they are not dancing people you know so they are just gonna feel like this is beautiful this is super beautiful when you dance it's magical but it's not for me it's not for me i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna introduce this other dance there because it's more you know it's quiet it's simple because you show the good stuff the nice stuff but they are not ready for that because they are, they are not a dance addict yet yeah. so you need to bring this accessibility in a way that they feel that you did what they also did in the class, but in a much nicer way, of course. Then they see like the challenge we were saying for the, the, the crowd before. The challenge is, is different. Now, if they are able to do what they just did, but in a much nicer way, look good, just flow from one movement to the other, it's already a plus. They already feel like dancers, you know, and that's going to be the stimulus for them to keep going. But if you show something too difficult, too high, they're going to get scared. They're going to fall in love, but they're going to get scared to try themselves. So guys, basically, those are the aspects that we take into consideration when preparing a class to introduce Brazilian Zook to a crowd that is already familiar with social dancing and with a crowd that is not familiar with dancing at all. So take those aspects into consideration. And good luck, and we hope you recruit a lot of new Zookers yeah, the next time you give a tryout class. Yeah, and of course, guys, um, as we said one more time, and we repeat that, there are many different ways, okay? So we just made it simple between these two crowds. But also let us know in the comments, like, uh, what uh, if you have done already tryout classes, 
how you've done it, how uh, the times that it worked, the times that didn't work, and how was the crowd, why it didn't work, you know, like, and why the other one worked. So we can all share some experience and we can all learn from each other. Yeah. And it's going to help the whole community. Let okay. us know Let us your know. experience as well in those situations. Yeah. So we're going to give some general tips now. That is good to have in mind for both scenarios, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're teaching people who already dance or if you are just introducing Brazilian Zouk for people who have never danced before. Those things are really important for you to have in mind and try to put in practice every time you have a chance, right? So first thing, it's always good that if, that if you have assistants or at least more experienced dancers from your community to join that class. They are gonna keep the energy higher. They are gonna uh, help you uh, to also like give attention to those people and make them have a better experience because they're gonna be able to dance with someone that can like uh, you know guide them a little bit and yeah. uh, give them some personal uh, attention there at the moment and also they're gonna see people who are uh, like them let's say look, for example we are Brazilians right it's good when we have Finnish people in class here who are already dance, who are already advanced dancers or who are our assistants because it also breaks that barrier that, ah, okay, they dance like this because they are Brazilian, right? Yeah. We also take this out of the way. If you are teaching people from your own nationality, great. We great, are yeah. going to look from the other perspective that they are going to have the chance to feel the community better because you're gonna have already some people who are inserted in the community there to give them yeah. that, that flavor and increase the energy of the class as well as uh, be able to give some personal feedback, have that, those people to understand a little bit faster what's going on while they dance together. It's important as well that before the class starts, you introduce those assistants because then the crowd knows that those people are like your your uh, your team or your assistants or they are people that may help them during the class otherwise they may also take your assistance wrong because like they are dancing together your assistant try to help and then they feel like wow who is this person that trying to yeah. teach me like during during the class while the teacher is there you know like so they can get annoyed by the team instead of helped by the team so introduce those people you know let let the crowd know that they are there to be like kind of copies of you to reach everyone while you are teaching because you, you cannot go to everyone but as they are among the crowd they can help you like with a lot of tips a lot of things a lot of small things to help the 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 crowd and of course that those people getting those help it, straight to them they're going to be super happy with this you know but they need to know that they are the qualified ones doing this otherwise they may take like who is this person the guys the guy he's trying to teach me all the time all these girls all the time saying that i'm doing this or that you know so you cannot bring this discomfort to the crowd this is something that you need to manage so you don't bring this thing and then remember i said when we were talking about like product so we have an order someone orders something and then you're gonna deliver that product so we are talking about zook now zook is the product that you want people to buy you are selling the idea to the new crowd why they should start consuming that dance instead of, or also that dance instead of another something like this you know so this is good that you 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 start always thinking a little bit about it because always when you are introducing zook to someone you are selling and you are selling an idea of doing the uh doing zook plus the other dance or maybe doing Zook instead of other dance because the person can do, can take only one. But it, it, this product has to have, um, um, how can I say this? Um, branding. A branding, yeah. A, a face, you know, like for a presentation, you know. So then it's very important that you dress accordingly, you know. So every time you are giving a class, a trial class, you are the new product coming. So then you go for a crowd that everybody is dressed up because it's a company, you know, uh, end of year party or something like this, and everybody's dressed. Everybody's good. You need to, of course, you don't. You have to dance in, uh, dress in a way that you can move, 
but you need to take care. You cannot just go with a sleeveless shirt, you know, like barefoot, Bermudas, among a lot of people with suits and everything, because it's gonna feel weird, you know? Yeah, guys, make sure to look professional. So you are there so representing something. You are that representing that. Yeah. Exactly. So you are the face of that product, let's say, as Freddie was saying, right? So people really have to. Uh, be interested in buying that idea or that product and we know that we live in a world as much as you can think that it's right or wrong but it doesn't really matter we live in a world that they what is go people are gonna look first so yes. first you are seen then you're heard right so people have to look and already have a very good first impression from you so this is gonna come from how you're presenting yourself so your personal branding as an instructor is as important as the quality of your class, right? And uh, the quality of the product that you're offering as well. So make sure to take this into consideration. Okay. So okay. the last one, uh, just before, let me just uh, reply here to uh, Marco because he added oh, yeah. something that is interesting. So as, uh, as important as um, to introduce your assistance to people, it is important also, of course, that you brief your assistance well uh, um, accordingly yeah. and what is their um, role yeah. in that class. What they are right? doing there, yeah. what they're going to be doing, that they're going to be That's right. making, uh, helping people, everything. So the crowd needs to know who are they and what they're doing in this. Yeah. So. Uh, last but not least, guys, make sure that you have a balance of time in this class, right? So you deliver the information. Uh, and again, always starts with the basics, guys. Yeah. Even if it's for people who already dance, uh, we go through the basics. Of course, for a crowd that already dances, we have a faster pace. And yeah. we can put a little bit of spices in those basics. But always start with the basic kit. Something in the basic kit yeah. that people will, will be able to use there. The right? foundation is rich enough to do a lot of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And have this balance between um, the time that you're going to deliver the information and the time for them to experience that then. So how, how much time they're going to try with the music, they're going to try with the partners, they're going to try following your instructors and then they're also yeah. going to try doing by themselves. It's hard for us to say like how much time you give to each section because as I said, there are tryout classes of 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, one and a half hour. So it really depends on the class and the time you're gonna have. But just just balance this a little bit because they, will, they want to get the instruction. They want to try those instructions with you, you know, while you are doing together with them. So they feel the timing, they feel how it's done, they see the example, they see everything. But then it's important that then they try themselves alone because that's the moment that they will have fun, they will make mistakes, they will struggle, they will make jokes. The, the whole fun thing starts there, and that's why they are there for, you know. So it's just balance plan ahead a little bit because then with the plan, you can change the plan if needed. But there is a plan to work on, you know. Yes, guys. So with those tips, we're going to wrap up for today. Uh, let us know your experiences in the comment or if you have any further questions related to this topic, leave it in the comments. If you have a friend that is going to benefit from these tips, you can share the live with them. If you are on YouTube and you are not part of our group yet, go there on Facebook, Zook Methodology by FNA. If you are on Facebook, also follow our YouTube channel. Freddie and Andresa, we have a lot of dance videos there and other stuff as well, like vlog, vlogs of our tri trips and things like that, okay? Yeah. All the, the links are in the description below. You can also uh, um, enrich this conversation, you know, bringing all the other aspects that we didn't say because this is a very big uh, topic. So we can we have so many different situations that so anybody that can that comes here to see and get some information they can also benefit from the comments yeah if okay. you found it useful uh hit the like button and give us some love and also you can suggest the topics of our next methodology mondays uh in the comments in the group or on youtube all right okay guys so stay well take care guys and we see you in the next methodology mondays have a great week guys see you Bye-bye.